Actually, I'll ask a little patience as we check our alignments. Then we'll do circles. Then we'll do the basic eight. And then we'll jump in the car and see where it takes us, okay? All right. <clears throat> so, uh, seated Qigong. So I start with the part in the lower body that's accepting the weight. In other words, my sitting points. I'm sitting down, so I start adjusting my rear end. If I'm standing, I start with the feet. Now you're going to notice as you're moving around on your rear end, I'm feeling the sitting points, the bones in my rear end. I can feel my knees and feet moving. So just make sure you attach through this hip area down into the ground with your mind, with your feeling. And don't let the lower body poop out. Pretend like you're, pretend like you're standing and moving. Let the legs push and release a little so you have the feeling of standing. And if you're someone who has trouble standing, this is the way to work up to it. Okay, so uh, feet parallel, open the width of the hips. You can go as wide as the shoulders, uh, whatever feels good to you. Knees right above that, no caving in, no slouching out, just like you're building a wall. Here's our sitting points. Lower back is straightening, so my tailbone swings under, just like my hand is doing, the tailbone swings under, straightening the lower back. You literally feel it open. You'll feel some engagement in the belly. Let it relax, let the abdomen be round, but feel it engaged. Check the midriff here. Make sure you're not collapsing forward in this area, very common. Wrap now so the shoulder blades separate. And that feels like the shoulder blades are literally separating. So you can take this structure you're building from the sitting points up the spine. Now through the shoulder blades, drop your chin so you elongate the spine. Shoulders are coming forward, chest is soft. Let the sternum feel like it's descending. So what they tell you to do in Western posture is gather a lot of energy up here. We let all that energy drop into the abdomen. So this is hugging a tree, holding the ball, this round position here. You can see the roundness of it. Elbows are dripping down. Let the shoulders relax, drop all that energy into the abdomen. Now at C7, feel like you're gently rising, lifting the spine like this, and we already addressed the tailbone, which is going that way. So literally between my two hands, the spine will lengthen, open, but don't pull on it. Try to have it relax and spread out. So like you're spreading out a, a lace tablecloth. You don't want to tear it, but you want to spread it out. Good. It's easy to put too much tension there. So pause and relax. Hold this shape that you've established and let it relax. Let your chin come down. Relax to the ground. Now move the head back. So again, you feel that neck elongate upwards. And you're floating the head up gently so that the neck vertebrae separate. So the foot spine is much straighter. Right. Now relax from head to toe. Good, take a deep breath, expanding the abdomen, lower abdomen. Exhale, of course it contracts. If you've been in class before, you know about chamber two and three, add that on there. If you don't, come to class more often, what can I say? Blower, blower, who's got the blower? I can hear a leaf blower in the background. Good, okay, so now just keep all that going. Hold that posture that we just established. Keep the breathing low in the body and wash your hands. Yet again, washing the hands. Uh, wash your hands, wash your hands. Who knew that this would become so popular, huh? Wow. Okay, back to the hands. So we're washing the hands with a little friction, a little uh, stimulation, a little warmth creeping in. It's obviously not a lot of effort unless you consider dropping tension worthy of effort. And it certainly is, right? So I'm, that's all I'm doing is I'm focusing on letting tension go. And I let the elbow and wrist relax and the shoulder, and you'll even hear now my lung and innards relax, see? You can even feel that change your legs. You feel your whole body change because you've dropped a lot of tension. So let the arms float down. As they do, take the chin down, usher the chin back, right? When I say back, I mean like that. So the neck elongates up. Then do the neck circles, 
gently, easily, fluid, small, slow. If it starts to feel a little tense, make sure you're breathing. Split the breath. Inhale, half of the circle. I like to inhale, head rolling back. And if all goes well, I exhale with the head coming forward. Okay. And you reverse direction as it feels inviting to you. So you can see I'm not working. I'm just, again, just like I'm poking through the antique shop, right? I'm just, oh, what is this? You know, you just kind of handle it gingerly and don't break anything. <laughs> Yes, I consider myself an antique at this point in time. Just, yeah. Yeah, nice. Oh. I've gone a little too far, but that's okay. I caught it, and I'm not, you know. But I don't want to continue exerting a lot of pressure and effort, overstretching. Just cajoling it open. Just enticing it open through this turtle, chin rising, falling. Honestly, I started right here, but now I try to involve the pushing of the feet against the ground. Bubbling well point. Now I release into the heel and the energy drops. I relax now. I can tuck the tailbone a quarter inch extra and drop that chin just a little sliver down, you know. Here I'm tucking tailbone, chin is down, and then the chin goes down. As I release the feet, taking the weight into the heel, the chin goes down. So I switch from a local effort to a whole body effort. We do that so our mind spreads out through the body. Our awareness becomes bigger. It becomes more accurate, too, because we're perceiving the whole body. And the big benefit is the energy stays in the body. You're causing it to circulate rather than dissipate. So quite literally, if you have a habit of a tense shoulder or a crooked knee, or let's say your head is cocked to one side, wherever the pressure of that manifests, the energy flow gets blocked there, but it can also leak out. It's almost like a pipe having a leak. The energy can go away from the body and even out of the etheric body and you lose energy. So you got to patch the inner tube before you inflate it. You got to check the inflatable whatever, basketball, pool. If there's a little leak and you're trying to inflate it, it, it you're only getting to a certain point. So more important to patch it rather than keep pumping in more energy. Now, if you have a lot of energy but a lot of blocks, then the pressure and the tension rises. So we have to remove the blocks, plug the holes, clear the circulation, and that's what these motions are about. Open the circulation. Just gently, like it's, uh, instead of blood, think of it like tomato soup, and you're just stirring your blood, your tomato soup in the pan. You're the pan, okay? And you're full of tomato soup, and you're just stirring it. Ah, yeah. You can see how my posture collapsed there. I was all the way over here like this. See, I don't know how that, yeah, yeah. I don't know what happened there. Ah. Now we're gonna extend the arms and rotate at the top of the shoulder. Now include the shoulder blade. Now let your breath harmonize with it. Inhale one way, exhale the other. Good. Ah, draw into the center and That breath going. <clears throat> Change directions. Good. Come back to center. Turn to one side. Putting the weight of the body on the other side. So, in other words, I'm sitting on my right side, my left leg is forward with virtually no weight on it. So I can rotate here at the very top of the femur, causing the knee and foot to go back and forth. Good. Inhale one way, exhale the other. Keep in 
mind penetrating, trying to occupy more and more of the leg, feel more into it, concentrate more into it until you feel more and more of what's happening in the leg. Remember the spiraling action of the muscles, trying to feel that. Good. That's right. So even once it's changed, right, to some degree, we move on. Don't overdo it. Time. I'm situated here, no way here, moving on that extended leg. So it feels very energetic, not like I'm moving something heavy. It's free, like a flag blowing back and forth. Easy, fluid. Mind changes, the motion changes. Inhale one way, exhale the other way. that one still heading down the body we started at the neck now we're down to the knees you can link the hands like so cradle swing back and support that knee sitting fairly even on the rear end weight distributed letting the lower leg hang until you feel the knee get a little space so gravity helps you here circle breathe smooth good there you go And let it float down. Now, in my case, tension in the arms, shoulders from holding it up, let it go. If you felt tension in your lower back because you were holding it up, let that tension go. Put it back to zero and then do the other side. No rush, try not to rush. Reverse. Oh, yeah. So that's the same in any language, right? Starting to. You know, and it, see, it takes a little while. We start with the neck, we're all the way down the knee. It takes a while to kind of let go of what was happening earlier in the day and get focused. If it's first thing in the morning and you're practicing, it still takes time to just really occupy the body and settle in. And of course, just remember, you start at the neck, work your way down. You get the whole body, all the joints. Feeling is just gently opening them like a flower, massaging them, letting them lubricate. You can see we generally do it in a position where there's not a lot of pressure on the joint. Yeah. Circles. So at this point, if you had to put your cape on and go save the world, that would be good, right? That, that, actually, if, if that's all you could squeeze in in one day, that would be better than nothing. But, but we're shooting for the 15, 20 minute mark. Uh, the next thing we go into is our basic eight. So each of these will have a primary focus point or two. In this case, the long, large intestine. This is the eagle, of course, number one. And Tucking tailbone, dropping chin, and the chest comes in. That's what's the feeling of moving the arms here. And exhale, come down, release to the ground. Tucking tailbone, dropping chin, pushing against the ground. Feel the lengthening coming through the spine. Open. And... Good, rotate, and hands behind. Now, there's kind of two ways to do this, and just for now, just do it the way that kind of feels best to you. And as we 
play around with these exercises. I might show you alternative ways to do it. As, uh, first of all, all the exercises can be performed sitting down or standing on your head. So feel free to, you know, play with that a little bit, see how that works for you. Yeah, you know, I mean, really, if you're in your right mind and you went into a place and someone told you to stand on your head for health and fitness, you'd be like, what? You know, but um, no, call it yoga and people are getting sore necks and hurting their backs trying to do stuff that's too hard for them. So count your blessings here in the Qigong that it's... Uh, Headstand free. Good. And honestly, think of that tomato soup analogy where, like, you know, your blood is the soup, right? And see here, I'm just pulling the ladle up. I'm coming up the spine, back to the hands on the spine. I squeeze the elbows together to pressure the lung. But this, just this feeling of moving the blood around. You're not trying to exhaust your muscles or go into a maximum stretch or anything. You're just letting these pressures now down in the abdomen come and go. And it's really much more of a stirring. Or if you like, uh, let's say you don't like tomato soup, do you like bread? Well, you're kneading the dough. So you squeeze the stomach, release. Just the idea of circulating, percolating. And you'll notice it's a swimming motion generally because as we want to move those fluids, well, that's where the swimming comes in, right? That's the definition of swimming. You're moving the fluids that you're immersed in in such a way that you, you move and don't sink. Think about it. <laughs> I haven't had any corny jokes this whole time. I had to throw in a corny joke. Plus corn and tomato soup and bread. Oh, that sounded pretty good. All right. Must be, must be lunchtime somewhere. Just where? Okay, down. Good. Inhale, exhale. Tuck tailbone, drop chin down. So you can essentially pull your shoulders up as a beginner and get, you know, get the job done. That's very nice. And then when we come up, when we, after they come up, just feel like the shoulders are pulling down and leveraging your arm up. All right. Same thing. Start the back side. Back to the hands, pushing against the ribs, pivoting and floating out, spiraling. And then I follow, folding in the... Midsection here, feel the weight go to the feet. Push back with the feet to return to upright. Inhale, squeeze the hands gently as you come forward so you get maximum pressure in the intestine area. Good, exhale, go back, one more. Good, nice. Let's go to number two, the archer. So just give a hug first, tuck your tailbone, and drop your chin, Chuck, check your verticality. Now we're gonna go into the horizontal, rolling onto one side of the rear end, and back, good. And you see how my spine, belly button, sternum, nose, kind of stand a straight line here. So this is to make sure you're moving in the hips so that you wind up squeezing and releasing in the stomach, spleen area here. This is where we're working, see? Good. And when you wrap and tuck tempo and drop chin, you actually drop into the belly area more. And now you feel like you're just taking the whole crock of soup and tipping it this way and then level and then tipping it that way. So all inside, all your fluids are moving, right? So we're using our muscles gently to get deeper, open up the joints and move the fluid. We're not attacking the muscles like a traditional Western workout. Good. Now, to open up the body more and control the change of pressures more and to guide it, we make a fist with one hand and a palm with the other, and then I sit, shift my weight onto the side that has the fist, in my case, the left side. My belly button then, once I get over here, turning like a globe, I rotate to the right. And then again, like a globe, I'm gonna open up here the bow and arrow tip at the waist, and then return, and then 
just level as you come back. Switch, I have right fist sitting on the right side, rotating to the left, tipping upward. But is it really? I mean, this is going up, but the elbow's going down. So you wanna feel an equitable rotation here. What most people do is they get in this position and they put all their intention here and they pull up here, see? And this goes dead, see? But really, you can't say, looking at me, is, is it this elbow going down or is it this elbow going up? Well, it's both. Okay? It's equitable turn like a globe. So if you have a globe at home in your library, right, right? Anybody, anybody? <laughs> Sit there and fiddle with it and notice the three, -dimensional, the three dimensions of rotation, right? So you were wondering why you got that globe. Now you know. Remember, you got that right when you started, the Qigong, pretty much. So get out and play with that thing. Oh, yeah, it's so cool. After that, it's green light. They can go demo it. So it would just all that would wind up in the dump anyway, you know? So that's one of my favorites. I think the other one I told you was in Los Angeles on Alameda, right? This old, old, old house that was abandoned and boarded up and broken into. It was like a heroin shooting gallery, like in the creepiest, creepiest movie you've ever seen of an abandoned house with heroin addicts in it. That was this house, right? And uh, obviously it's gonna get demoed and they're gonna put like a 7-Eleven there or something, who knows. So anyway, I go in there and I swear to God, there's this one of those frosted glass half domes that are hanging by three chains, just with a bare light bulb. That's how they did it that day. And they put that little bowl hanging down from it. I mean, this thing's from the 1920s and it's just been hanging there probably all that time. And for some reason, nobody got freaked out and broke the light. I mean, there's, you wouldn't believe the carnage around there. And this thing's just hanging there. I go, if that's not a good luck charm, then nothing is, right? So I'm taking that too. Anyway, back to Qigong. Here we go. One of these days, too, when I'm out driving, I'm going to stop at the Jocelyn Center and get a picture of that sundial because I owe you a picture of that damn thing. So you can see how the shape on the centerpiece of that sundial is just like that figure eight in the sky of the, uh, the pattern of the sun, wasn't it, during the... Oh, I tell you, yeah, really. bad habit here now see because uh, this might be from sitting so um what i'm referencing is just simply that i'm kind of like leaning forward see i see people do that all the time when they do this one standing is they go like this you know and then they never they might get back to vertical but the point is why not just start vertical see so this rounding stuff see is is the same and then i kind of angle here so now i'm coming straight through the body and open and then drop down So on this one, the wrapping feeling that you feel in the chest, right? This wrapping feeling, you want to feel it around the midriff and in the hip. So this in and out with the legs that you can see easily when I'm standing, right? In, out. That's coming from this claw area. Closing, opening. That's the wrapping feeling coming into the hips, right? So th this feeling right here. It's hard to get that down there. So I'm just jumping up here because I'm really not doing it correct, sitting down. And I think if I show you what the goal is of the standing, you can actually maybe clean up your sitting a little more. You know what you're shooting at, in other words, you know? That this vertical is very important. This pressure inward and inward, here, here, here. Right? I, I, I almost like I'm squeezing the toothpaste tube down here now, and I keep squeezing, and this toothpaste coming up the spine, and then it goes blap right out of the tube, and it 
everywhere. And then it's dripping down, right, uh, the tube. And then squeeze. And you can actually put the toothpaste back in the tube. Look at that. It is possible in Qigong. All things possible in with Qigong. Another one thing you're probably missing sitting down is that feeling again. See, if I go here when I'm standing and bend my knee and let these muscles go limp and get really tense here, then I, I get the joint off center and I, I can feel a, almost on the verge of pain. But if, but if I engage these muscles back here to the same degree that these are getting involved, see, then my knee stays kind of where it is. It changes, but the pressures inside stay the same. They intensify, but they don't create this pressure breaking feeling see so I want you when you're rotating your legs sitting all right you know this business okay you're naturally gonna have your mind here and probably here you're gonna feel some resistance in the knee as you're coming around see and so your mind is real sensitive about this but if you engage the back of your knee then when you rotate at the top you just the knee doesn't change at all it doesn't feel any lag in the joint. Can you feel a difference? So engage, engage the back of your knee. Engage the back of the knee. There you go. See? Now don't do it. And you can feel when these muscles pull and these are limp, you almost feel this pressure in the knee, right? Like you're going to break it, see? There you go. And you'll forget this, of course, which is why I'm reminding you. In other words, don't feel bad. It's very easy to forget the back of your knee, right? I mean, no one's ever seen the back of their head. They've seen it in a mirror. They've seen it in a picture. But you can't really see it yourself. Never will. So you have, that's, the, that's the shadow area, the hidden area of the body that we take advantage of in the Qigong. So here when I'm sitting down, I activate the back of that knee. I must. You have to find a way, since you're sitting down, to activate the back of that knee. That's going to drive your mind down the body, balance the energy flows as well, create space in the knee, which is important when there's physical weight, but it's also important for the energetic circulation, okay? So get after those legs. All right, here we go. What's next? Starfish. Rotate. Drop the tailbone, drop the chin. Come up. Open up. Downward pressure. Kidney bladder. Now, see, I'm sitting down more and the knee bends. You got to find a way to kick that pressure down through the legs so that you can come back up with it, right? Again, now I'm pulling my elbows up to the ears and opening and then dropping my shoulders down and shoulder blades and everything. That's version one. That's the beginning version. That's a good way to do it, right? Literally going to tuck tailbone. So that's dropping. And shoulders rising. You can see the back really lengthen, right? For sure. Yeah. So that's version one, and that's fine. Do it that way. And then just make sure you drop it after you pick it up, see? Yeah. Now, just for fun, the other way to do it, right, is um, instead of pulling this up right away, see my shoulder blades are dropping. See that? And my spine's still elongates. The shoulder drops, and C7 goes up. So you just, it's more internal. You can't see it very much. Right? Yeah. But it gets just as long. So we'll call that the intermediate or method two, you see? So there's, you know, you, you fiddle with it, you know. Your first day ice skating, you're like, whoa, right, you know. And then once you get, then, then you learn to skate backwards eventually. So, I mean, it's like anything you do. Just gonna, gonna fiddle with it.
Good. So now dancing starfish, huh? Wrap. Roll in. Shift as you turn. Good. Here's another one where I'm slumping over because I'm sitting down. So I just want to keep the crown of my head over the perineum. So I rotate like a ballerina, see? And then elongate up and down as I also open horizontally. The breath is matching the expansion of this exercise. In other words, inhaling right here. Of course, exhaling as everything comes in. Good. Oh, bones cracking. All right. That's a good one. Mm. So just literally, I'm spreading out in those two directions, side to side, and growing taller as I tuck tailbone and lift at C7. Ugh. And again, at some point in time, you'll feel like you've got to be awake and moving and opening a little, and it's not going to change much more. You move on, right? We go into washing the hair, extending the hands. Here, I'm tucking tailbone, dropping chin to draw this in. Good. Tucking tailbone, pushing that out, folding in the middle. Rotate arms, shoulder blades, push from the bottom, opening in the quad, drawing in, tailbone tucks, chin drops. And then practicing at home might be good to have a mirror in front of you or like we said turn that iPad on and reverse the camera so you can see yourself in the iPad as you're doing it so you can find it if there's any obvious imbalances or things that you're you got out of whack if you look you'll find them All right, nice. <clears throat> well, we're on to uh, number seven already, okay? So we're gonna do the giant clam routine. I'm gonna scoot to one side of my chair. My rear end is all the way over, sitting on the right side on my weight. This is like no weight. So I can kind of swing it back and forth here, pivoting on the toe. And then I'm opening in the quad to make that knee swing back. Good, let that expansion come right up this column, this pillar, this channel right here from quad to bird's nest and raise the arm so you can open that area a little more. And then just open and close that area. Gently stretch it out, breathe into it, put your mind in that area, expanding this, in my case, left side of the torso and back. Try to let the mind penetrate into the body to the front side of the spine, very deep in the body as you open that and Close that. Smooth out your breath. It shouldn't be any explosions or expressions of effort. It's just very smooth inhale and then smooth exhale. It's definitely a full breath, but it's not so much that you get stuck and then have to exhale with force. So that's feeling pretty good, huh? You feel that? Fantastic. So it's your call. You can always, you know, go deeper further, but generally, you know, for our purposes, wake it up, open it up, get the energy feeling going, and then move on. So today we're kind of just <clears throat> gliding through.
Notice the choice of words. What did somebody say the other dude? Yeah, we'll blast through it. Uh, you know, we're, we're I, I, can, I, can, I can meet you at gliding. We'll do gliding. Think of a glider airplane. See, there's no motor. You know, they drag it up there with another airplane. They cut it loose and see it's just riding on the air. It's, you got to cooperate with the environment. You can't dominate it with a glider. You know, it's no, no, no. See, right when you stop doing that and then harmonize it and make it smaller, it'll feel better. So you smooth that out, your breath just coming and going. Yeah. It's like the rat moved into my backyard, now it's moving out. Yes. I always laugh when I tell people about something like that because they're always like, oh my God, really? And I'm like, if you went outside at night and just looked at, they're everywhere. Yeah, yeah. They're not at my place. Well, yeah, they are. This in and out with the tide, this fluid back and forth. We're just gonna change it now to kind of this direction, right? Like a forward back, like a kid in a swing, playing on a swing set, right? Just back as far as it goes, and then it gets to the end. There's a feeling of releasing, relaxing, right? It just kind of stops, and then it goes back the other way, right? Yeah. So well, the swing is a good analogy. I never think about it, but just this feeling of here, it's, it almost stops. It's so relaxed. Everything's, yeah, it goes back. Yeah. Now we just go here in our Tai Chi position with the roundness, right? Through this area. I, I just go horizontal with it. And so I drop my chin, tuck my temple, and this again. You know, the spine's going one way and the hands are moving the opposite way but you still want that swing feeling nice and easy just going out to where it stops just because it stops not because a bunch of screaming and yelling or brick wall there right it just just that's just where it stops and it goes back and then it goes again Turn to the side for the sitting version. It's kind of like that, really, just like that. Danny version just has more closing in the claw. Kind of like this version, really. And then I turn the hoop sideways so an animal could jump through there. It's like a circus, so you can jump through. Just keep it where it is and turn it sideways. should just feel like it, like you stirred the soup. So there's our basic game. Check your posture, get square, sink your energy a few times, right? From the top of your head, all the way down through the body, through the feet, in the ground. Now go above the head a foot or two and dissolve that area, relax that area, and start to relax the head, neck, shoulders, chest, spine, everything as your hands go down, your mind goes down, all the tension drops down, leeches into the ground and disappears forever. Let it go. 
If you missed a bit of tension, if you still feel like something is tight or compressed or strong, just do it until you can wash that away. See, if you just keep rinsing it, you'll <clears throat> definitely feel a change. Lighter, more relaxed, an open feeling, not compressed. Should feel quite pleasant and noticeably different. And it's just something you have to feel. Good. Now, if we were to close our practice there, we'd do our little thing, bringing in the white light and the violet light and all this and sending it out. But if we want to do anything extra, we would kind of decide at this fork in the road. So, first of all, how much time have we been practicing? Haha, <laughs> fantastic. So, 45 minutes, I don't know about you, sounds like dissolving time. All right. So now that we've sunk our chi, a feeling of dropping the tension, just like you're getting dust off, you know, a preliminary clean. Now we're going to go inside and, and relax deeper, dissolve more deeply. So that's going to be our inner dissolving. And however you feel right now, I just want you to correlate that with uh, ice. So just pretend you're an ice sculpture and you feel the way you feel now, but you're completely made out of ice. And we're just slowly going to melt from the head, eventually all the way down to the toes, and turn into water. Magically, the water is just going to stay right where we are, but it will change from ice to water. So starting above the head, relax that area. If there's any tension or <laughs> anything up there, release, soften, feel like it's melting. And then start to dissolve, melt, to the very top of your head. A couple inches down the back side, both sides, and the front. Just like if you were to don a cap, that area that is covered, just melt that whole area. Feel it relax, change from ice to water. Now we go back to the top, come down through that melted area and take another big chunk of the head, let's say the whole forehead, back of the head, side of the head area and feel it change. It stays where it is, but it changes from ice to water. Back to the top. Coming down to the melted watery areas now and just do the entire skull. To the bottom half of the skull now melting, changing from ice to water. Feel it soften, warm, relax, melt. Oh, very good. Back to the top, almost like you're diving into the water now, swimming down until you encounter the ice of the neck. And it just gives way and melts on all four sides, back, front, left, right, and all the way inside, melt and changing from ice to water. Back to the top, coming down to the melted head, <laughs> the melted neck. If you find little bits of ice still, tension, bring them down with you and start to melt the top of the shoulders, upper back, where the neck joins the torso at the throat, all around. And now we continue back to the top, coming down. Now the entire shoulder, upper back, including shoulder blades. Muscles in the chest, rib cage, spine, top of the spine, lungs, everything up there, melting, releasing, transforming into a liquid water, easy feeling. Back to the 
top, swimming down now with the mind through the easy areas and now to the midriff, right? The torso, the chest down, shoulder blade down, all the ribs, down to the waist, belly button, lower back. top from all the way down to the sitting points, the hips, rear end, tailbone, top to the thighs, everything, the bones and the bone marrow inside, all dissolving, turning to warmth. Now just continue down again, pass through the center of the body, pass down below the sitting bones, coming into the thigh, into the knee, next time come from the top and go all the way down to the ankle. itself and the toes and down into the ground down down at least a couple feet down into the ground as if the ground itself were frozen and now it's thawing out melting Now do that several times. We'll, we'll take about uh, eight breaths or so, you know, to inhale and take your mind out on the exhale all the way from the top down through the feet into the ground. Just swimming down and through again, looking for places that are still a little tight, frozen, tense, strong, compressed, and just melt them again. And again. Keep repeating. Just scanning from above all the way through and down and out. Letting any tension, compression, Just weird feelings, right? Meditations, I'll, <laughs> I'll tell you, where I get to the end and I'm kind of like, I think I'll just keep doing it for a while. It feels so good. Other types of meditation, I'll set a timer and let's say I do an hour and then at the end I'm like, oh, thank God that's over. You know, I mean, really, it's work, right? But this one, <laughs> it's like, man, why, why should I go back to stressing about life when I can do, do this? It feels good. So what we do then is we attempt to go deeper. Now that you're just a water body, a body of water, it's like a lake sitting up vertically, right? We're just going to evaporate from the head down to the feet. And just think of, you know, when uh, water is in, uh, when molecules are in the water state, the H2O, um, the molecules are close together, right? And as they evaporate, the space gets bigger and bigger between the molecules till they turn into a gas. And then if you're in the desert or something, you just keep expanding until even the water vapor is gone, right? So what used to be a lake is now evaporating, it's gone. Not even a cloud left. 
So this is the feeling that we want to have of the evaporating now from the space above the head into the head and then all the way through the body into the ground is just that everything's, all the water is expanding, space is invading, right? More and more space until the water spreads out away from the human shape that the water's in now and it spreads into a gas that fills up the entire area around you, fills your etheric body and then it keeps expanding until it even leaves the etheric body and there's just space. Where once there was ice and then water and now there's just space. areas that feel tight, give them more space. Just so they disintegrate in essence and float away. Now just take a pass, you can use your hands if you like, or just your mind, but go to that space above the head and just make coming down through you, no me, no thank you, all the way down, 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 and just feel no impediment, no, almost like the body's gone, it's just a cloud of energy now, and you move your mind through it several times, you just see if there's any remnants of ice or water left and you just let them evaporate. Plus now you can feel your energy flowing from above your head down through your body. And as you go down you feel, you feel it, right? It's like an energetic rolling pin. It gets to your feet and you can feel it drain out and go further, right? And it's weird because you can your mind goes first, and, and after it goes through an area, then you feel the energy come in. And I'll prove it to you, because when you take your mind through the hips, down the leg, through the knee, you take your mind out the feet, and then you feel the energy follow it out the feet. You feel that? Yeah. So that feeling after the mind goes through, that's the actual chi, that's the actual energy, whatever you're feeling, however it feels to you. So you're moving it. And that's what we're talking about, the use of the mind. Sitting here like this, being like, they say if you move your concentration to your feet, the energy. I think that makes sense. Therefore, I'm a chi master. Well, I tell you what, you might understand it, but getting to be able to do it is a different thing. Well, congratulations. Very good. And literally, it changes the state of your entire being on all levels. So that is a very nice practice there. What's our clock saying? Mila claims that we've reached the end of time. Look at that, Mila, very good. Good call. Mila's internal clock, very good. Good dagger. Oh, uh, what a goodie. Okay, you wanna close down? Okay, let's close down. All right, so now we just kind of do that again. And sink the chi. Now reach into the heavens with your mind and gather white light and bring it, your mind, and here comes that light with it into your body from top to bottom, into the ground. Reach into the earth with your mind and ask for the earth energy to come up into your body, a violet light into the feet, legs, filling you from below and flowing right out the top of your head and your hands. Ugh. Go to the center, join those two energies and start to expand them as a spherical, three-dimensional expansion in every direction until they hit your feet, your head, your hands, and then your etheric body fills with your mind and your energy and keep it expanding until you fill the room. Just make your mind aware of the entire room, your energy expands. 
Expand your mind to blanket the entire earth and you expand your energy and feel it radiating out like a light all over the world. And then bring energy back to your kidneys now, flowing in, white light. Charge them up, charge them up, feel it, feel it, bring it in, bring it in, bring it in, a little more, come on. And smooth out the light all around you. Drop the shoulders, elbows, close the head, join knuckles and thumbs and bow. Very good. Nice. So fantastic, we did uh, all three big chunks, right? We did our circles, we did our basic eight, we did our dissolving, and just kind of glided through it, and uh, not a lot of teaching. So that's a very rich practice today. You could get away with 20 minutes, but way to go, way to go.